virgin. Hallelujah. The Amen. Bible says that the, there will be a sign given. A virgin right. shall conceive and bring forth a child. Amen. Bring Amen. forth a man child. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. My, my, my. I want you to go with me this morning to the book of Matthew, the uh, 12th chapter. I want to talk to you this morning, and I don't know how long we'll go with this. We may spend more than one Sunday on it. This may be the only time we get to it. Sometime this month, of course, we have to talk about the occult and witchcraft, and not so much because this is the only month that it takes place, but this is certainly the uh, time of year that it is glorified the most as far as on the in the uh, town square. Amen. Amen. Right. I saw some decorations in the uh, yes. city hall window over there at Island yesterday and how anyone yes. in their right mind could not see the demonic influence behind that is right. beyond me. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And not just there, but all over the place, no matter where Amen. you turn, turn on the television right. and it's there. You go into Walmart and it's there. You go yes. to the city offices and it's there. Probably the schoolhouse. I'm not sure that they do they decorate over there for Halloween, yeah, but yeah, they do. Yeah, well, they do. what a shock there. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. They'll decorate for Halloween. Yeah. They'll throw a fit when you decorate for Christmas. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. It's a shame. But yeah. uh, and but you know the occult is all, all the time, and not just during the month of October. Yeah. But that's, that's whenever right. it comes to its uh, peak. Amen. Right. And we know that. And we've been getting requests from people because we've been talking about it on the radio as we always do. And we've already sent out several CDs and newsletters on the subject that people have been asking for. So we're thankful for that. Today I want to talk about, really you could trace back the, the uh, decorations and the problem that America has with their, with their, uh, their uh, interest in the occult and, and things of witchcraft and sin in general can be traced back to this. A couple of weeks ago, maybe not that long now, maybe 10 days or so, I heard Brother Jim Nations on Francis and Friends on, on Sun Life Broadcasting Network say something. I like Brother Jim Nations a lot. He says a lot of things that, uh, that I really enjoy hearing. Can't say that about everybody, but I certainly enjoy hearing Brother Nations. And he said this, <clears throat> you cannot keep what you believe in your heart from having an effect on the way you live. He went on to say, a right heart will produce right living. All right. And a wrong heart will produce wrong, wrong living. living. Amen? Wrong. And this is nothing new to us, but it's certainly something when you hear things that the world has to say and things that Christians have to say, or they profess to be Christian anyway in the day that we live in, when you hear some of the things that they say, you realize that this subject must be addressed. Right. Because some of the things you hear today go along these lines. Don't judge me. You're not my judge. God looks on the heart. Amen? Come on. They'll go ahead and say things like this. I may be living in sin, but my heart is right. Mm. Think about that. Yeah. I may not be living right, but my heart is right. Mm. I may not be doing the right thing, but God knows my heart. Mm. So apparently the world and a majority of the church, what we'll call the church today, believe that you can separate the two. They believe that there is a separation between the way you live and the condition of your heart. But I've got news for you. No truer words have ever been spoken than those that Jim Nation spoke when he said you cannot keep what you believe in your heart or your heart condition, if you will, from effect, having an effect on the way that you live. The popular thing today and the norm for many people to say is that don't judge me, God sees my heart. God knows my heart. As if to say that it doesn't matter how I'm living, most important thing is my heart. Yeah, but we want to look and see what God's Word says about it. Is it possible today to have your heart right with God and there be no evidence of that on the outside? Is it possible today for your heart to be wrong and evil or wicked or sinful and it not to have an effect on the way that you live on the outside? 
Well, let's see what the say. Well, my preacher says that it don't matter. Well, let's see what the Word of God says about our heart this morning. Amen. You don't have to go there, but I want to read you this scripture first before we jump over to Matthew. I've already told you to turn there. Jeremiah said, "The heart is deceitful." Above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? I, the Lord, as it always does, the Bible answers its own questions. Amen. It behooves some people sometimes to go ahead and read a little bit farther because they'll stop and I say, Why well, don't understand that? Well, read a little bit farther, God will explain it to you. Amen. Amen. Who can know it? Then he says, I, the Lord. Search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now listen. The Lord is talking about the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. It is desperately wicked. And who can know it? And then, you might think he switched gears. No, he's talking about the same thing. He's talking about things that can, that are that are that are. Uh, that are together that cannot be separated. He's talking about things that go hand in hand. I'll get it out in a minute. He said, I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now think about that. He's talking about the heart. Then in the very next verse he talks about your ways and the fruit of your doings. He's trying to teach us that the two are connected. That the condition of our heart will always, sooner or later. Now you might be able to hide it for a while. Amen? Right. You may be able to hide the condition of your heart for a while, but sooner or later, it will begin to show itself in the lifestyle that you live. Say, so, well, I don't believe that. Well, Jesus did. That's why I've got you over there in Matthew. That's why the Lord tells us here in Jeremiah, His ways, the fruit of His doings. He speaks of that right after He talks about the heart because they're inseparable. Sooner or later, the things that are in your heart will show themselves on the outside. See, you're more transparent than you think. Right. The Pharisees and the Sadducees of Jesus' day, Brother Tyler, were more transparent than they thought. Wow. They went around and they wore the right kind of clothes. They did the right kind of things as far as they they, they did went through the the uh, they went through the the routines of the law. Right. But when they opened their mouth, they told on themselves. Amen. Amen. Right. The hypocritical, self righteous ways of the Pharisees was a fruit of what their heart really had in it. Oh. Their heart showed themselves when they opened up their mouth. Jesus said in Matthew twelve and thirty three. We, just, we might just lay the foundation this morning for this. Matthew 12 and 33 says, Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Amen. Jesus turns to him and says, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Did you hear that? Amen. Jesus talking about, He calls them a generation of vipers. He calls them evil. And He says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And He goes on, He takes it a step farther than that. He says, a good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. Did you hear that? Amen. Out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, where? In his heart. Out of the evil treasure of the heart bringeth forth evil things. We see in the words of our Savior, in the words of the Lord in Jeremiah, that it is impossible to separate the condition of your heart and the way that you live. Because sooner or later, those things which are inside will make their way to the top. You see, 
If you have a problem with cursing today, what did it say? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you have a problem with cussing today, the problem is not so much with your tongue as it is your heart. If you have a problem with backbiting today, the problem is not so much with your tongue as it is your heart. If you have a problem with stabbing people in the back or running people gossip, how about gossip? If you have a problem with gossip today, the problem is not just a tongue problem. It's a heart problem. See, we spend a lot of time treating the symptoms but not going to the source. We pray, God, please don't, don't let me do this thing again. Please let me stop lying. See, if you have a problem with lying today, it begins much deeper than just your mouth. Amen. It comes from your heart. Right. So when we pray, we should pray, Lord, change my heart. Mm -hmm. Cleanse my heart. Make me right on the inside. And then... Whenever my heart begins to line up with the Word of God, my life will begin. See, that's where we get a lot in a lot of trouble. Sometimes we try to line our life up and our heart's not lined up. But when we begin to line our heart up with the Word of God, why do you think David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? David knew something about this. Right. Do you think David's affair with Bathsheba started whenever he sent the man to get her and bring him to the castle? Or do you think, or the king's palace? Do you think that David's affair with Bathsheba just started whenever he walked out there and looked at her and saw her on the rooftop? No, there was adultery in David's heart. Amen. Amen. It was a heart problem. It was, that's what we have in America today. It's a heart problem. Amen. That's what we have in the church today. We can talk about the false doctrine that's being preached. We can talk about the lifestyles. Listen, I, I read an article this week about a preacher that has Bible study in the bar with his deacons and with other people because he said he thinks they'd probably feel more comfortable sitting at the bar chugging down a cold brewski while they read the Bible. This pastor drinking right along with the other people. I ain't talking about just going into the bar and sharing the Word. I'm talking about that's where they have their Bible study. That's where, And while they're doing their Bible study, they do their drinking. Come on. So you can talk about those things. But the problem is not really the beer that's on the table. The problem is not really the fact that the, that the pastor is sitting there drinking the beer. It's a heart problem. It's a heart problem today. David's sin began in his heart. Come on, preach. And it manifested. He didn't keep it hidden either. Right. It manifested itself. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Why? Because you can't keep it hidden forever. Right. Sooner or later, the covers get jerked off. Right. That which you do in silent will be shouted from the rooftop. Right. Amen. Unless we deal with the things that's going on in our oh, hearts. It's a heart problem this morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we spend a lot of time dealing with the symptoms. Right. Instead of going to the root of the problem and saying, Oh God, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. That's what David prayed. That's what he prayed after his affair with Bathsheba. Created me a clean heart. Because David knew the problem did not begin on his rooftop as he gazed upon the woman taking a bath. The problem did not begin whenever he sent his servant to get another man's wife so he could lay with her. The problem began in the heart of David. The things that, that we do today, our problems, our sin begins in our heart. Come on, preach. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. True. Every tree is known by his own fruit. What fruit? His ways and the fruit of his doing that proceeds out of the heart of man. Wow. There's a heart problem. There's a heart problem. Gossip doesn't begin with the tongue. Backbiting doesn't begin with the tongue. Cussing doesn't begin with the tongue. Slander doesn't begin with the tongue. It's a heart problem. Oh, pretty sure. there's, a, there's a heart problem. Yes, sir. That's true. The book of Luke puts it this way. For a good tree bringeth, forth, bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, mm -hmm. neither doth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. Come on. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Right. For if thorns men do not gather figs, <laughs> nor if a bramble bush gather they grapes, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. 
And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. So we see how that even though the popular talk would deny it today, and they would tell you that God knows my heart. Even though they're shacking up with somebody. Even though they're doing things that are completely contrary to the word of God. God knows my heart. Yeah, and so will everybody else in time. Right. Because we are much more transparent than we like to think. Come on. We like to think we can fool everybody. And you might be able to fool a lot of people some of the time. Yeah. But sooner or later, if we do not deal with the things of the heart, if we do not, what it talks about, out of the good treasure of our heart. Well, how does how does how do, does our heart become full of the treasure? We lay them there. Amen. Wow. We lay treasures up in our heart. Right. Good things, bad things. We've talked about this before, and I don't know any other simple, simpler way to explain it than this. You have two that war within you. That's what Paul taught us. New man, old man. Spirit, man, flesh. And it's simple enough for a babe to understand the one you feed the most is the one that is the strongest. And the one that is the strongest is the one you will see the most. Amen. The one that is the strongest is the one that will have more influence over the way you live than the other. If you take two men today and you feed the one and starve the other, guess who's going to be the strongest? The one that you feed. Amen. Same principle here. When, whenever we feed on the things of the world, whenever we feed on the things of sin, we lay up those kind of things in our heart. And in return, those are the kind of things that we produce. In other words, garbage in, garbage out. Amen? Right. If you put the Word in, David knew this, Thy Word have I hid in my heart. I've written it upon the tables of my heart. So I the Word in, the Word out. Spiritual yeah. things in, spiritual things out. Worldly things in, worldly things out. That's why we have so many carnal Christians today. Because they spend more time in front of the TV than they do the Bible. Because they spend more time at the movie theater than they do at church. Because they spend more time on the phone gossiping than they do on their knees praying. Amen. It's simple deduction today to realize the more spiritual things you feed on, the more spiritual fruit you're going to produce. Oh, Jesus. And the problem begins in our heart. Exactly. Amen. The problem begins in our heart. Jesus said in Matthew 15. Turn over there. I want you to see this. Matthew 15 and 18. Matthew the 15th chapter and the 18th verse. Now the Pharisees were complaining because the disciples were eating with dirty hands. <laughs> As against their law. Amen. Couldn't eat with dirty hands. Come on. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Jesus said. But those things which proceed out of the mouth mm -hmm. come forth from the heart, mm -hmm. and they defile the man. Now listen. He goes on to tell us other things that are in the heart. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornication, mm -hmm. thefts, false witness, lying, in other words, blasphemies. Yeah. These are the things which defile a man. Right. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. You see, when you steal, that's not just a problem you had with you couldn't control your hand. Right. Well, I took something that belonged to me. <laughs> No, when you steal, it's because theft first began in your heart. Yeah. Amen. Come on. When you lie on someone, uh -huh. it's not because, well, you know, I don't know what happened. My tongue just started saying stuff, and it just, I don't know where it came from. I know where it came from. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Whenever a lie comes forth, it is because it was birthed first in your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Oh, me. 
That's what Jesus said. Oh. Evil faults. Yeah. Murders. In order for you to commit cold, calculated, premeditated murder, you must have first worked it out in your heart. Come on, preach to it. It must have first been present in your heart. Amen? Yes. David found out about that too. Right. He planned to have Bathsheba's husband killed. Mm -hmm. First, he wanted to cover up his sin. Right. Like we all do. Amen. First, Brother David, he said, well, I know what I'll do. Uh -huh. I'll get Bathsheba's husband drunk. Right. And I tell him, you go home, mm. have fun, spend the night with your wife. Mm. And he'll think that the baby that was conceived will belong to him. Yeah. So he gets him drunk and he tries to send him home. Mm. But Bathsheba's husband won't go home. Yeah. He said, What? While my brethren are out there in the field fighting and they're at war and they're at the battle. Mm. I should not go home and enjoy the pleasures with my wife. Yeah. So he sleeps there. Right. Yeah. David's plan blows up in his face. Mm -hmm. Finally, he gets desperate enough. He says, I know what I'll do. See, the whole time, mm -hmm. David's heart. That's why it broke him so much whenever Nathan stuck his finger in his face and he said, You're the man. That's why when he prays his prayer of repentance, he says, God, against you and you alone have I sinned. Amen. That's why he prays, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Because he knew that his problem was a heart problem. Absolutely. Did he commit adultery? Certainly he did, yes. but it began in his heart. Did he commit murder? Certainly he did, but it began in his heart. Yes. Finally, he says, you sent him out there to the front of the battle. Come on. And when the battle gets hot, everybody else draw back and leave him out there. Yes. <laughs> and all of it started in his heart. Jesus, so if you think today that the condition of your heart does not affect the way you live and will not show itself, the Bible yeah. teaches us completely something the opposite. Amen. It is impossible for your heart not to affect the way that you live. Yes, sir. Sooner or later, it will make its way to the top. Absolutely. So we see that evil faults begin in the heart. Murder begins in the heart. Right. Adultery begins in the heart. Yeah. Fornication, thefts, lies begin in the heart. Oh. The Bible teaches us that the tongue is a little member. Yeah. Boasteth of great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire of iniquity. Oh. It says the, the tongue is set on fire of hell. And if the tongue is set on fire, then that which kindles the flame must come from the heart. Because Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Sooner or later, you tell on yourself. Amen. The Pharisees, Jesus speaks to them. Listen to what He says. In Matthew 23 and 23, Jesus talks to the scribes and the Pharisees, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint, and anus and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Come on. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These things ought you to have done, not left the other undone. You blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter. Now listen right. to me. But within... They are full of extortion and excess. Now they did their diligence to look right yeah. on the outside. Come on. We've got some of those today. Right. They look good. Amen. They look the part. Amen. Their sleeves are long enough, Brother Dave. Yeah. Their hair's short enough. Yeah. Or if it's the opposite sex, their hair's long enough. Yeah. Their dress is long enough. Right. But like the Pharisees and the scribes, when they open up their mouth, they give their self away. Exactly. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I know a sister to this day, I try my best to avoid when I see her coming. Uh, she looks right. Yeah. But when she opens her mouth, brother so and so, sister so and so, that church, this church, mm -hmm. you tell on yourself. Y'all remember the song that Hank Williams wrote, don't you? Yeah. Your cheating heart mm -hmm. will tell on you. It will. That's right. It will. Amen. 
Guaranteed. What's he tell them to do? Verse 26, Now blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Did you hear that? What's he talking about? He's talking about their heart. First, make sure your heart lines up with the Word of God. Then, because it will be a result of a right heart, then we will begin to live right. Not because we are trying to put on a show and try to fool somebody, but because the fact that your heart, when it begins to line up with the Word of God, begins to affect the way that you live. Wow. Don't tell me today that you're spending your Saturday night to the boot scoot and joining at the beer sipping clubs yeah. and your heart's okay with God. Because once your heart begins to line up with God's Word, our life will begin to line up with God's Word. It won't be so easy for you to lie. It won't be so easy for you to gossip. It won't be so easy for you to do the things of the flesh because the more of God you have in your heart, the more spiritual things you feed upon, those are the things you begin to produce. Amen. When we lay up good treasure in our heart, the Bible says, out of the treasure of a man's heart, that's what he brings forth. Yeah. Whether it's good treasure or whether it's bad treasure. Amen? Exactly. When we begin to lay up good things in our heart, when we begin to feed upon the Word of God, right. when we begin to feed upon God's Word more than we do the things of the world, Amen. then we will begin to talk about God's Word more than we do the things of the world. Yes. When we begin to allow the fertile soil of our heart to take in the beautiful seed of the Word of God, then the fruit that is manifested or that is brought forth from that will be spiritual fruit and not fruit of the flesh. But we can't get this. We don't understand that it's not enough for us to be fed on Sunday morning spiritual food and Tuesday night spiritual food, but then on Monday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday we can feed upon everything else and it not affect us. You are crazy. You cannot just have two. Listen, let's, let's you want to try it out. Let me see if I got any volunteers. I want one volunteer that will eat one meal on Sunday morning and one meal on Tuesday night and not eat none of the rest of the week. Then I want a volunteer that will fast on Sunday morning and fast on Tuesday night they can have whatever else they want the rest of the week. I think I know how long the line would be and where the line would be at. Amen? Yeah. Same thing with your spiritual man. Because we starve him to death and we feed the flesh. Right. We've got a fleshly man that is a glutton and a spiritual man that's starving to death. Absolutely. Amen? And that, thus comes the fight within us. Huh? And that's why many times the flesh overrules the spirit and gets his way because we don't have enough spiritual nourishment to keep a fly alive, let alone a spiritual man inside of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're going to make it in the day that we live in, if you're going to endure to the end, you better start giving your spiritual man something to eat besides Sunday morning and Tuesday night. Amen? You better start feasting upon the Word of God. Whether it be by way of CDs, whether it be by way of spoken Word, whether it be by way of you getting the Bible and reading it yourself, feed your spiritual man something besides what you get on Sunday morning or Tuesday night. You're going to starve him to death. Amen. Exactly. And listen to me, this affects the way that we help other people too. Yes. When people call you because they need an answer. Right. What do you have to give them whenever all you've done is feed upon Hollywood mm. and the things of the world and the things of the flesh? Nothing. Not, not any good treasure. Amen. Because out of the treasure of a man's heart, heart, he gives. That's what we give. We give to people what is in our heart. What's in our heart gets there because we put it there. Yes. If you have a bank account today, if there's any money in there, it's because you put it in there. How many people got somebody out there that's putting money in your bank account that ain't you? <laughs> I don't. If I got any money in there, it's because I went to the bank and put it in there myself. Amen. If you've got any good treasure in your heart today, it's yeah. because you're laying up good treasures through God's Word, right. through prayer, through the Spirit, True. through the spiritual things. So if your heart's full of good treasures this morning, it's because you're the one filling it. Actually, the Spirit is doing it through the work through a work of grace, but it's because you're feeding upon. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about salvation this morning. We're not talking about works. 
We're talking about the simple fact that the thing that you feed upon the most is going to affect your actions the most. The things that you feed upon the most are going to be the things that affect your life the most. Right. Amen? True. If you want more joy, get more Word. If you want more peace, get more Word. If you want more fruit in your life, get more Word. Amen? In your heart. I'm visiting the close. David said, Thy Word in Psalms 119 and 11, and I've quoted it this morning, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. David knew that which he had in his heart would surface, come to the surface. Like I said, David's sin with Bathsheba started in his heart first. If you've committed adultery today, it began in your heart first. We cultivated it. We babied it. We took care of it. We fed it. And then it came forth. It showed itself in our life. Same way with you out there. Same way with me. We are far more transparent than we think. The thing that we feed the most is that which will have the most power in our life. Luke 6 and 45, what did Jesus say? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Garbage in, garbage out. Spiritual things in, spiritual things out. Stocking our heart with good things, with the spiritual things of God. He said in Psalms 51 and 10 in His great prayer of repentance, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Listen what He says in Psalms 139 and 23. It behoove us all to write that down. Psalms 139 and 23. And pray this prayer. You talk about going to the root of the problem. David said in Psalms 139 and 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Did you hear what he said? Man. Search me, O oh God. If we spend as much time praying this kind of prayer as we do, Lord, forgive me for that fib I just told. Lord, help me to control my tongue more. Lord, forgive me for that lustful thought I just had. Yeah. Say, Lord, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We got a whole church world that is caught up with these superficial things of life. They spend all their time talking about the superficial things, the carnal things that are not going to last. Amen. And they avoid talking about your heart because they don't want you to feel condemnation. They don't want you to feel bad for those pornography books that you have hidden. They don't want you to feel bad for those, you know, spirits that you have at your house in your wine cabinet. They don't want you to feel bad because of the way that you live. Or maybe the, Brother Beasley told me this week, he was talking to a man of a certain denomination out there somewhere. and They were talking about a pastor and he asked where could he find the pastor and the man said, well... He'll either be at his wife's house or his girlfriend's. I'm not sure, but check at one of those places. Brother Beasley said, he said, what? His wife's house or his girlfriend's? And the guy said, well, that's the way of the Navajo. Brother Beasley looked at him and said, I don't care if it is the way of the Navajo. It ain't the way of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. The guy said, well, we're working with him. Mm. Brother Beasley's response was an old-fashioned country room, but he said, working with him, my foot. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He wouldn't preach at my church. Oh. He wouldn't be my pastor. Amen. Amen. Right. He, see, he said they have a problem out there, sort of like what we've got in the modern-day church today, trying to mix the Muslim faith and the Christian faith. He said out there they're trying to bring in the things, the ways of the Navajo yeah. into their church so that they don't offend them. Uh -huh. Even though that it's wrong, the chance to the other gods and the great spirit in the sky and all that stuff, it's the, it, even though it goes against the Word of God, so that we don't offend them, we're going to use these things to get them into our church. 
Yeah. Got a heart problem. Amen. Right. Got a heart problem. And we're more transparent than we think we are. And we should be praying, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Listen, we've got a whole slew of preachers out there today that want you to come to church and they want you to leave feeling better than you were when you came. They want you to feel good about yourself. They want you to feel good about the way you're living. Even if you're living in adultery, they want you to leave out of here encouraged and feeling good. Even if you're living in fornication, they want you to leave out of here feeling encouraged and feeling good. Even if you're on the bottle, on the booze, they want you to leave feeling encouraged. If you're a Muslim, if you're a homosexual, whatever you're doing i want to encourage you and let you feel better when you leave listen to me Absolutely. this preacher don't ain't in with that crowd amen if you're living in sin i want you to feel bad because you're living in sin amen i don't want you walk out of here feeling good about yourself if you're living with some other man's wife right amen i want you to feel listen here's 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 a big revelation for you if you're living in an adulterous lifestyle, you need to feel bad. Amen? Amen. Because you're going to feel so good, you ain't going to see no need for repentance, and you're going to split hell wide open. Amen. Sooner or later, somebody needs to make you feel bad. True. About the way you're living. Come on, preach. Amen? Come on, I want preach. you to feel bad. Amen. I want you to feel bad. Yes, sir. I'm going to do my best to make you feel bad. Amen? Absolutely. <laughs> because I'm going to preach to you what God said. Right. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Not a pat on the right. back and I'm feeling good and <laughs> if you're, you're okay, I'm okay. Yeah. Amen. Come but on. to let us know there's a heart problem. Come on, preach. There's a heart problem. Yes, sir. And the things that we do, will, the things that we have in our heart will affect the things that we do in our life. All right. Amen. Right. That's the main point of it. And I don't know if we'll go on any farther with it or whether we'll stop there next week but I wanted you to know this is what the Lord laid on my heart and I couldn't get anything else I didn't want to get anything else if this is what the Lord wanted us to have but you don't have to look around and figure out why this is needed because of the attitude of people that well I may not be living right but my heart's right you can't separate the two Amen. if our heart is wrong our life will be wrong Right. if our heart is right our life will be right will we be perfect? no we won't be perfect. But sin will not have dominion over us either. If sin has dominion over our heart, it will have dominion over our life. Amen? Right. Because that which is in our heart, like Brother Jim Nation said, Amen. it's impossible to keep that from affecting True. the way that we live. The last few weeks we've talked about some rich men. We talked about the rich man that Lazarus knew. We talked about the rich man that tore down his barns to build bigger was going to. That was yeah. his plans. We talked about the rich young ruler, Brother Rodney. And we talked about how that they had a love for riches. Well, you see, that love for riches didn't begin in their hip pocket. It was because that God sat on the throne of their heart. You hear me? Amen. The rich man with Lazarus, he had a heart problem. Right. The rich man that was going to tear down his barns and build bigger, he had a heart problem. The rich young ruler, he had a heart problem. There was something sitting on the throne of his heart that he could not dethrone and allow God to be the ruler of. They had a heart problem. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. That would be a good prayer for us to pray. Amen. 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 God, make me clean. Hide, hide your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you. Begin to fill our kidney up with good stuff. That way the things that come out of it is good stuff. Amen? All Instead right. of bad stuff. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Anyone Amen. else this morning have something?